Welcome back, guys and gals. It is time for Journey Kids at Home once again. I am Mr. Josh. We don't need any supplies today. We just need the regular Bible, your imagination, your attention, and of course some adults. If you can go grab those things right now, I'll be back with you in just a few seconds. On your mark, get set, go! And we're back. Time for the arrival activity. This month, we're talking about friendship. And last week, I had you kind of think through some characteristics or some ways that you can identify a good friend. Well, this week, we're talking about how friends love each other. And they do that in a very unique and distinct way. So this week, our arrival activity is going to go like this. I want you and everybody in your house to think about a time that they were treated well loved well by a friend. And I just want you to share that story with each other and how it made you feel and what that friend means to you. All right, I'm going to give you a few minutes for that and I'll be back to get us started for worship. Worship. See you soon, guys.
Well, I hope all of you had an easy time thinking of when you've been loved well by a friend. I really hope that all of you had so many to think about that it was hard for you to choose. But now that we're done with that arrival activity, it's my favorite time. I'm already standing up. You guys should be standing up because it's time for worship. We'll be doing it in five, four, three, two, one. Jesus, you have been so faithful. Jesus, you have been so true. I will be forever thankful because I never had a friend like you. Help me to be who you've been to me, to everyone I see. Let us love one another with our love like no other yet That's the way you love us, God Never turn away, you are with us every day, yeah That's the way you love us, God Your love has always been beginning to end There's never been a better friend So let us love one another with our love like no other yet That's the way you love us, God you with me in the darkest valley you with me on the mountain top i'm thankful that you never leave me and that your love will never stop help me to be who you've been to me to everyone i see let us love one
Good morning, Journey Kids Elementary. It's Miss Nahana here, and it's time to go over our memory verse. If you remember, we are memorizing Proverbs 17, 17 in the month of September. Well, let me go ahead and read it for us. A friend loves at all times. They are there to help when trouble comes. Proverbs 17, 17. Great. I hope you guys have been practicing memorizing, uh, whether with emotions or if you have your own creative ideas. But today, I'm going to give you one of two options. Or if you feel up to the challenge, you could do both. Um, but I would like for you to cut up 10 strips of paper and put all the words on those 10 pieces of paper, including Proverbs 17, 17. You could break it up however you want. Um, generally, with this short verse, you could do two, um, one or two words per strip. And then you can mix it up and then rearrange it back into the correct order. And then, if you're up for the challenge, you can play hopscotch. So, how many of you played hopscotch before or know what that is? I think most of us have, um, but we'll have a diagram up so you can see. But what you'll need to do is have 10 squares, and then you'll place each of the strips on each of the squares, starting with the first word or phrase in the first box, which is closest to you, and then all the way down to the 10 squares. And then for each time you go through, challenge yourself um, to say the verse without looking at the strip and then see if you can go faster and faster each time on the hopscotch. And then the next challenge is pick up one of those strips and then go through and see if you can memorize what that word or phrase is that was supposed to be in that box. Or if you have siblings or parents that are wanting to play, they could pick it up so you're not sure which one they picked up and then see if you can memorize it. All right, you guys got this. Have fun and I will see you next time. Bye.
I sure do have a lot of friends. I have 2,762 of them. Uh, I met this girl in kindergarten and then she moved away after that. And oh, this guy friended me after I gave him my seat on the bus. And I have no idea who this person is. <gasps> hmm. I may have 2,762 friends on here, but I think I really only know like 10 of them. I probably should have thought that through first. Anyway, real friends are people you should really know. So let me introduce myself if we haven't met. I'm Haley and I'm here to talk to you today about friendship. Friendship is using your words and actions to show others you care. You know how to tell who your real friends are? They show up in person, not just on your phone. They show up when you're happy and when you're having a party. They show up when you need help. They show up when you're sad and you need a shoulder to cry on. Real friends, your best friends, are there for you in the good times and the bad. Just like the two friends in today's story. They went through what every friendship goes through. The highs, the lows, running for your life from an angry king. Oh, okay, well maybe not every friendship goes through that part. <gasps> I wonder if one of my 2,762 friends can fix a broken phone. Oh, I know, I'll just call someone. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's not gonna work. Haley! I'll be right back. Hmm. Boy, is it good to have friends you know you can count on. As a matter of fact, I'm actually with one of mine now. Oh, you thought I was going to say my wife, Stephanie? Now, she had her 15 seconds of fame last weekend. And much like my wife, this friend of mine is always there for me when I need it most. And that's what we're going to be talking about this morning the qualities that we admire in a friend, and the kind of friend that we want to be to others. And not only that, but the kind of friend that God calls us to be to our fellow brothers and sisters. Now, please flip to 1 Samuel 20. We're going to read 14 through 17. That's 1 Samuel 20, 14 through 17. And while you're flipping, you know what time it is. It's time for three questions. Now this first one is a gimme, just to get your confidence up. What is the book after 1 Samuel in the Bible? Second Samuel, after 1 Samuel, you get it. Extra credit if you can tell me the book after 2 Samuel in the Bible. Question 1b. That, my friends, would be 1 Kings. Question number two, how many books are there in the Bible after all? My oh my, did I hear 66 books in the Bible? Question number three, who is Jonathan's dad in 1 Samuel? Jonathan's dad, who we're going to be learning more about this morning, is King Saul. And we're going to find out why King Saul and David weren't exactly seeing eye to eye. But before we do that, let's go over the three things we know about the Bible. Number one, it is true. Every story in the Bible really happened. Number two, it's one big story. All the stories together tell us how much God loves us. And three, it's all about Jesus. He is the hero who came to rescue us. Okay, let's flip to 1 Samuel 20, 14 through 17. Read along with me. But show me unfailing kindness like the Lord's kindness as long as I live, so that I may not be killed. And do not ever cut off your kindness from my family, not even when the Lord has cut off every one of David's enemies from the face of the earth. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, May the Lord call David's enemies to account. And Jonathan had David reaffirm his oath out of love for him, because he loved him as he loved himself. What a beautiful friendship between Jonathan and David, loving one another as they love themselves. 
I hope you all are inspired to love others as you love yourself this morning and know more about what God is calling us to do for our friends. See you soon. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 Samuel, chapters 18 through 20. Now imagine for a moment that you're a prince. It's a pretty cool job. Your father, King Saul, is a fierce and handsome warrior with a hot temper. Away from me, you fools. Saul is the first ever king over the land of Israel. And since you're his son, most people expect you to be the next king. You'll live in a fine palace, wear royal robes, and carry the best weapons. Your name is Jonathan. Call me John. You got a great life, right? But then your dad hires a new guy, a young man your age named David, who's only a shepherd boy. But somehow, through the power of God, David has just defeated the giant Goliath, saving God's people in the battle against the Philistines. I come against you in the name of the Lord. Your dad has given David a place to stay in the palace in a high ranking army. You and David even become friends. Now imagine that David fights in every battle and wins. The people of Israel are even more impressed with him than they are with King Saul. King Saul is like great. Yeah, but have you seen David? He is like awesome sauce. To top it off, You've heard rumors that David has actually been chosen by God to be the next king of Israel, instead of you. It would be so tempting to be jealous of David, to not talk to him or hang out with him. But that's not who Jonathan was. It's not what Jonathan did. In 1 Samuel, we discovered that instead of being jealous, Jonathan chose to share the best of what he had with his friend. Here, take my robe. Then people will see how important you are. Are you sure? Take my belt, too, and my sword. But these are all things for a prince. You're worth it. Thank you, friend. King Saul, on the other hand, did become jealous. So jealous that he hurled a spear at David. And later on, he told Jonathan and all of his servants to kill David. Jonathan was horrified. He quickly warned his friend. Find a place to hide. I'll talk to my father and find out what's going on. The next morning, Jonathan faced King Saul. Don't harm David. He's helped you. He put his own life in danger to kill Goliath. The Lord used him to win a great battle. Why would you kill him? Okay, fine. I'll show you how awesome sauce I am by not putting David to death. Jonathan and David were relieved. And for a short time, all was well. But then King Saul went back on his word. He tried to kill David again. And when he fell, he sent other men to try to kill David. I haven't done anything to your father. Why is he trying to kill me? He won't do it. He tells me everything and he hasn't said a word about hurting you. That's because he knows we're friends and you would tell me. This is terrible. I'll do anything I can to help. So the two friends made a really complicated plan, like something out of a spy movie. Their top secret plot had David hiding instead of showing up for the feast, while Jonathan made up this story to try to find out how angry his dad was. Now, instead of going outside and talking to David about it, Jonathan chose to shoot arrows close to far like a secret message. In the middle of it all, their friendship stays strong. Whatever happens, please be kind to me. I know the Lord will defeat all your enemies someday, but promise to always be kind to me and to all my family. I promise. Shake. Shake. The two young men made a promise to stay friends no matter what might happen next. Then, it was time to put the plan into action. When Saul discovered that David was missing, he was filled with rage. I knew it! You're on his side. That is so not cool. As long as he's alive, you'll never be king. Why do you want to put him to death? What has he done? Saul was so angry, he couldn't think clearly. He actually threw a spear at his own son. 
And Jonathan left immediately. And the next morning, he hurried to the place where David was hiding and sent their top secret arrow code message. When David realized things with the king were not good, the two friends ran to meet up. One last time. I'm so sorry. My father. I know. It's not your fault. Jonathan and David hugged each other and wept. Go in peace. In the name of the Lord, we promise to be friends. He will be a witness between us and our families forever. There was nothing more to say. David left the city to hide from Saul and Jonathan went home. Now Jonathan could have allowed Saul to kill David and maybe become king himself. But instead, Jonathan trusted God and chose to protect and love his friend. Wouldn't it be cool to have a friendship as strong as David and Jonathan's? Those guys would do anything for each other. Jonathan even risked his life to protect David, but that's what friends do. They love each other no matter what. Okay, okay, not that kind of love. I'm talking about the kind of love this guy Paul wrote about in one of his letters. You can find the letter in your Bible. It's called the Book of 1 Corinthians. You wanna know what love is? Here's some of what Paul wrote. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not brag. It is not proud. It does not easily become angry. It always protects. It always trusts. It always hopes. It never gives up. Love never fails. That's how you show love to a friend. You're not impatient with them. You don't get angry easily. You protect them and you stand up for them. And you never ever fail. Wait, love never fails? That seems kind of difficult. The truth is, for us, it's kind of impossible to love without failing. If you really want to love your friends the way God wants you to love, you're going to need God's help. After all, he knows more about love than anyone. He loved us so much that he sent his only son, Jesus, to die on a cross for our sins. And with God's help, you can love people more than you could ever do by yourself. So the one thing to remember today is this. Friends love one another. Sometimes friends fail, but that's okay. Friends also forgive, which is a good thing because because this was my friend Erica's phone and I think she's gonna be like, and I'm gonna be like, Aah. and then we'll laugh about it <laughs> because she's a real friend and so am I. So I'm gonna find a way to get her a new phone. I think I'll show up and tell her in person. I mean, it's not like I'm gonna call her or text her. <laughs> okay, goodbye friends. See you next time. Now it is time for our review game. And we're gonna do something that we haven't done in a long time. Call it a throwback, if you will. We're gonna play Put the Story in Order. So, when I get done talking, there's gonna be some pictures pop up. And those pictures are gonna represent the story that we just read. Except they're gonna be out of order. And you've gotta put them in the right order. So, take their letters and put those letters in the order that the slides should appear to represent the story the right way. All right, let's see if you can get the story in the right order. And I will too. On your mark, get set, slides.
And now for the moment of truth. The slide will appear on the snap of my fingers and we'll see if we were correct. Ready? That's what I got. Well, everybody, it's time to move on to our application questions. First part of the application question, or the application section, because the first one's not a question. David and Jonathan had a very close friendship. Share a story about a very close friendship that you have. Number two, can you think of a time you showed a friend that they were important to you? What did you do to show them that you love them? All right, and question three, why should we love our friends? That's a good question. I'll see you in just a little bit. So take some time to discuss with your parents, and I'll be back. Okay, everybody, like every week, I have to say goodbye at some point, but I want to focus in really quick on that last question. It was, why should we love our friends? And the answer to that is because Jesus loves us as his friend. He is the friend of sinners, and we, although sometimes we hate to admit it, are sinners, but he has called us friend, and he treats us with love and kindness, and he calls us to be friends to others and love them in the same way. 
We love our friends because we've been loved by Jesus as a friend. I hope that motivates you to go out and show your friends what they really mean to you, to really spend some time and sacrifice for them, do nice things for them, and stick up for them when they need somebody to stick up for them, and call them out when they need calling out. I want you to love your friends well and to be loved by your friends well because that glorifies God. So this week, think about how you can love your friends well, better than you did last week. I've got to go. I've got to get some breakfast. I am hungry. So maybe you guys go get some breakfast too. See you next week.